Hello everyone. This week we will continue our exploration of the world of mental disorders. We will explore the following questions. First, what do we mean by mood disorders and how common are these disorders? Next, we will learn about symptoms that contribute to the development of the bipolar disorder. And finally, we will dive deeper in the notion of depressive disorders. We will review the symptoms and life circumstances that can help us understand and diagnose depression. Incidence and prevalence. Let's talk about terminology. Well, any departure, from a state of physiological or psychological well-being, is defined as morbidity. In other words, the word morbidity means disease, injury, and disability. It can also be used to describe the periods of illness that these persons experienced, or the duration of these illnesses. One measure of morbidity is the incidence, which refers to the number of persons in a population who become ill. We want to know, for example what is the risk to develop suicidal behaviors among children who were spanked by their parents. Here we are interested only in the new cases that occurred during a given time period. Another measure is called the prevalence which refers to the number of people in the population who already are ill at a given time. Here we include both the new and pre-existing cases. All cases present during a given time period, are included when we talk about prevalence. Marikangas and colleagues, reported in 2010 that the incidence of a bipolar spectrum disorder in the U.S. was 2.2% among 13- to 18-year-olds, and 4.4% among adults. Blanco and colleagues, reported in 2008 that in the United States, the 12-month prevalence rates of bipolar disorder, is 3.24% among college students aged 19 through 25, and even higher rates of 4.62%, among non-college students of the same age. Major depression is a common and treatable mental disorder, characterized by changes in mood, and cognitive and physical symptoms, over a two-week period. During 2013 to 2016, 8.1% of American adults, aged 20 and over, had depression in a given two-week period. Overall, women were almost twice as likely to have depression as men. This pattern also was observed among each age group. Does the prevalence of depression change over time? The data show, that over a 10-year period, from 2007 to 2008 to 2015 to 2016, the percentage of adults with depression, did not change significantly. Among men, the prevalence of depression was 5.7% in 2007 to 2008, and 5.4% in 2015 to 2016. Among women, the prevalence of depression was 10.4% in 2007 to 2008, and 9.3% in 2015 to 2016. Let's look at the race disparities. The evidence from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey suggests, that depression was lower, among non-Hispanic Asian adults, compared with Hispanic, non-Hispanic Black, or non-Hispanic White adults. Income inequality, is another risk factor for depression. This figure shows, that the prevalence of depression among adults decreased, as family income levels increased. Overall, 15.8% of adults, from families living below the federal poverty level had depression. The prevalence of depression, decreased to 3.5% among adults at or above 400% of the federal poverty level. Indeed, men with family incomes at or above 400% of the federal poverty level, had the lowest prevalence of depression at 2.3%. At the same time, women, with family incomes below the federal poverty level, had the highest prevalence at 19.8%. Bipolar and Related Disorders Bipolar Disorder, that was formerly called a manic depressive illness or manic depression, is a mental disorder, that causes unusual shifts in mood, energy, activity levels, concentration, and the ability to carry out day-to-day -day tasks. There are three types of bipolar disorder. All three types, involve clear changes in mood, energy, and activity levels. These moods, range from periods of extremely up, elated, irritable, or energized behavior, which are also known as manic episodes, to very down, sad and different, or hopeless periods, that are also known as depressive episodes. Less severe manic periods are known as hypomanic episodes. Bipolar 1 Disorder Bipolar 1 disorder is defined by manic episodes that last at least 7 days, or by manic symptoms, that are so severe, that the person needs immediate hospital care. Usually, depressive episodes occur as well, typically lasting at least 2 weeks. Episodes of depression, with mixed features, that is, having depressive symptoms and manic symptoms at the same time, are also possible. Bipolar 2 Disorder People with Bipolar 2 Disorder have a pattern of depressive episodes and hypomanic episodes. They do not have the full-blown manic episodes that are typical of bipolar 1 disorder. Cyclothymic disorder, 
also called cyclothymia. Cyclothymic disorder is defined by periods of hypomanic symptoms, as well as periods of depressive symptoms, lasting for at least two years for adults and one year for children and adolescents. However, the symptoms do not meet the diagnostic requirements for a hypomanic episode and a depressive episode. Sometimes, a person might experience symptoms of bipolar disorder that do not match the three categories listed above. This case is referred to as other specified and unspecified bipolar and related disorders. Bipolar disorder is typically diagnosed during late adolescence, teen years, or early adulthood. Occasionally, bipolar symptoms can appear in children. Bipolar disorder can also first appear during a woman's pregnancy or following childbirth. Although the symptoms may vary over time, bipolar disorder usually requires lifelong treatment. Following a prescribed treatment plan, can help people manage their symptoms and improve their quality of life. People with bipolar disorder experience periods of unusually intense emotion, changes in sleep patterns, and activity levels, and uncharacteristic behaviors. Often people do not even recognize their likely harmful or undesirable effects. These distinct periods are called mood episodes. Mood episodes are very different from the moods and behaviors that are typical for the person. During an episode, the symptoms last every day, for most of the day. Episodes may also last for longer periods, such as several days or weeks. A person who experiences a manic episode can feel high and jumpy. They can have a decreased need for sleep or eating. Racing thoughts. Think they can do a lot of things at once. Do risky things that show poor judgment, spend a lot of money. Have reckless sex. A person feel like they are unusually important, talented, or powerful. A depressive episode looks quite different. A person feels sad, down, empty, or hopeless. Increased appetite and weight gain, problems with sleep. Talk very slowly, feel like they have nothing to say, forget a lot. Difficulty concentrating and making decisions. Unable to do even simple things. No interest in almost all activities, decreased sex drive, inability to experience pleasure, feeling worthless, think about death and suicide. Sometimes people experience both manic and depressive symptoms in the same episode. This kind of episode is called an episode with mixed features. People experiencing an episode with mixed features may feel very sad, empty, or hopeless, while at the same time feeling extremely energized. A person may have bipolar disorder, even if their symptoms are less extreme. For example, some people with bipolar disorder to experience hypomania, a less severe form of mania. During a hypomanic episode, a person may feel very good, be able to get things done, and keep up with day to day life. The person may not feel that anything is wrong, but family and friends may recognize the changes in mood or activity levels as possible bipolar disorder. Without proper treatment, people with hypomania can develop severe mania or depression. For a diagnosis of bipolar 1 disorder, it is necessary to meet criteria for a manic episode. The manic episode may have been preceded by and may be followed by hypomanic or major depressive episodes. Importantly, the occurrence of the manic and major depressive episodes should not be better explained another psychotic disorder. Manic episode. Criterion A. A distinct period of abnormally and persistently elevated, expansive, or irritable mood, and abnormally and persistently increased goal-directed activity or energy, lasting at least one week and present most of the day, nearly every day, or any duration if the hospitalization is necessary. Criterion B. During the period of increased energy or activity, the presence of three or more of the following symptoms, four if mood is only irritable. 1. Inflated self-esteem or grandiosity. 2. Decreased need for sleep. For example, a person feels rested after only three hours of sleep. 3. More talkative than usual or pressure to keep talking. 4. Flight of ideas or subjective experience that thoughts are racing. 5. Distractibility such as, attention too easily drawn to unimportant or irrelevant external stimuli, as reported or observed. 6. Increase in goal-directed activity. This can be either socially, at work, or school, or sexually. It can also show a psychomotor agitation, or a purposeless non-goal-directed activity. 7. Excessive involvement in activities that have a high potential for painful consequences, for instance, engaging in unrestrained buying sprees, sexual indiscretions, or foolish business investments. Criterion C. The mood disturbance is sufficiently severe 
to cause marked impairment in social or occupational functioning, or to necessitate hospitalization, to prevent harm to self or others, or there are psychotic features. Criterion D. The episode is not attributable to the physiological effects of a substance or another medical condition. If a full manic episode emerges during antidepressant treatment, and shows symptoms beyond the physiological effect of that treatment, this represents a sufficient evidence for a manic episode, and, therefore, a bipolar 1 diagnosis. Criteria A through D constitute a manic episode. At least one, lifetime manic episode, is required for the diagnosis of bipolar 1 disorder. One of the differences between manic and hypomanic episodes is their length. The manic episode needs to last one week, while hypomanic episode can last for four or more days. Criteria A and B are the same. Criteria C through F are as follows. Criterion C. The episode is associated with an unequivocal change in functioning that is uncharacteristic of the individual when not symptomatic. D. The disturbance in mood and the change in functioning are observable by others. E. The episode is not severe enough to cause marked impairment in social or occupational functioning or to necessitate hospitalization. If there are psychotic features, the episode is, by definition, manic. F. The episode is not attributable to the physiological effects of a substance or other treatment. Notes. A full hypomanic episode that emerges during antidepressant treatment but persists at a fully syndromal level beyond the physiological effect of that treatment is sufficient evidence for a hypomanic episode diagnosis. However, caution is indicated so that one or two symptoms, particularly increased irritability, edginess, or agitation, following antidepressant use, are not taken as sufficient for diagnosis of a hypomanic episode, nor necessarily indicative of a bipolar diathesis. The major depressive episode has three criteria. Criterion A5 or more of the following symptoms have been present during the same two-week period and represent a change from previous functioning. At least one of the symptoms is either 1. Depressed mood, or 2. Loss of interest or pleasure. Note, do not include symptoms that are clearly attributable to another medical condition. Symptom 1. Depressed mood most of the day, nearly every day, as indicated by either subjective report, for example, feels sad, empty, or hopeless, or observation made by others, for example, appears tearful. Note, in children and adolescents, it can be irritable mood. 2. Markedly diminished, interest or pleasure in all, or almost all, activities most of the day, nearly every day, as indicated by either subjective account or observation. 3. Significant weight loss, when not dieting, or weight gain. A change of more than 5% of body weight in a month, or decrease or increase in appetite, nearly every day. Note, in children, consider failure to make expected weight gain. 4. Insomnia or hypersomnia nearly every day. 5. Psychomotor agitation, or retardation, nearly every day, this should be observable by others, not merely subjective feelings of restlessness, or being slowed down. 6. Fatigue or loss of energy nearly every day. 7. Feelings of worthlessness, or excessive or inappropriate guilt, which may be delusional, nearly every day, this should not be merely self-reproach or guilt about being sick. 8. Diminished ability, to think or concentrate, or indecisiveness, nearly every day, either by subjective account or as observed by others. 9. Recurrent thoughts of death, not just fear of dying, recurrent suicidal ideation without a specific plan, or a suicide attempt, or a specific plan for committing suicide. Bipolar 2 Disorder. Criteria have been met for at least one hypomanic episode, and at least one major depressive episode. There has never been a manic episode. The occurrence, of the hypomanic episodes, and major depressive episodes, is not better explained by schizoaffective disorder, schizophrenia, schizophreniform disorder, delusional disorder, or other specified or unspecified, schizophrenia spectrum and other psychotic disorder. The symptoms of depression, or the unpredictability, caused by frequent alternation, between periods of depression and hypomania, causes clinically significant distress, or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. The criteria for cyclothymic disorder include the following. A. Numerous periods with hypomanic symptoms, that do not meet criteria for a hypomanic episode, and numerous periods with depressive symptoms, 
that do not meet criteria for a major depressive episode, lasting for at least two years, or at least one year in children and adolescents. b. During two years, the hypomanic and depressive periods, have been present for at least half the time, and the individual has not been without the symptoms, for more than two months at a time. c. Criteria for a major depressive, manic, or hypomanic episode have never been met. d. The symptoms in criterion a, are not better explained by schizoaffective disorder, schizophrenia, schizophreniform disorder, delusional disorder, or other specified, or unspecified schizophrenia spectrum, and other psychotic disorder. e. The symptoms, are not attributable to the physiological effects of a substance, or another medical condition. f. The symptoms cause clinically significant distress, or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. Next, we are going to look at the major depressive disorder. Diagnostic criteria for major depressive disorder include the following. The presence of five or more of the symptoms during the same two-week period. A noticeable change from previous functioning. At least one of the symptoms is either, one, depressed mood, or two, the loss of interest or pleasure. Symptom one, depressed mood. Symptom two, diminished interest or pleasure. Three, weight loss or gain. Four, hypersomnia or insomnia. Five, psychomotor agitation or retardation. Six, loss of energy. Seven, feelings of worthlessness or guilt. Eight, difficulty thinking or concentrating. Nine, suicidal thoughts or attempts. In order to address concerns about the potential for the overdiagnosis of, and treatment for, bipolar disorder in children, a new diagnosis, disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, referring to the presentation of children with persistent irritability, and frequent episodes of extreme behavioral discontrol, is added to the depressive disorders, for children up to 12 years of age. The diagnostic criteria for this disorder, include, a. Severe recurrent temper outbursts, manifested verbally, for example, verbal rages, and behaviorally, for example, physical aggression toward people or property, that are grossly out of proportion in intensity or duration to the situation or provocation. b. The temper outbursts, are inconsistent with developmental level. c. The temper outbursts occur, on average, three or more times per week. d. The mood between temper outbursts, is persistently irritable or angry, most of the day, nearly every day, and is observable by others, such as, parents, teachers, or peers. e. Criteria A through D have been present for 12 or more months. Throughout that time, the individual has not had a period lasting three or more consecutive months, without all of the symptoms in criteria A D. F. Criteria A and D are present in at least two of three settings, that is, at home, at school, with peers, and are severe in at least one of these. G. The diagnosis should not be made for the first time, before age 6 years or after age 18 years. H. By history or observation, the age at onset of criteria A through E, is before 10 years. I. There has never been a distinct period, lasting more than one day, during which the full symptom criteria, except duration, for a manic, or hypomanic episode have been met. J. The behaviors do not occur, exclusively during an episode of major depressive disorder, and are not better explained by another mental disorder, such as, autism spectrum disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, separation anxiety disorder, persistent depressive disorder or dysthymia. And K. The symptoms are not attributable to the physiological effects of a substance or to another medical or neurological condition. There are many treatment options for the mood disorders. Some of the approaches that can help include medication, psychotherapy, peer support, light therapy and electroconvulsive therapy. This week I encourage you to watch the videos on bipolar disorder and depression. These videos will help you connect the technical knowledge from this lecture with multiple real-life cases. In addition, I will be posting a discussion board questions that will be directly related to these videos. Finally, please read the assigned readings for this week.